Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hackfest today. Uh, today, we're doing the D Developers Day. So joining me is uh, many of the, the developers for In Inkscape. And we've got some interesting and exciting uh, discussions, but also ac activities for today. Um, so I am Martin. I'm going to be acting as the host, uh, although I am also a, a developer. Um, and so what, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce ourselves if you're if you're here, if you want to um, introduce yourself in the chat or you want to introduce yourself uh, by enabling your microphone and speaking. Uh, and then we'll go through uh, what our activities are for today. Uh, who wants to go first? I can go first. OK. Um, yeah, also, uh, welcome, everyone, for joining um, from my side. My name is Thomas. Um, I'm with the Inkscape project for quite a long time, uh, even though I was also absent for a couple of years. I think my first commits go back to 2008, uh, where I did several bug fixes uh, re um, related to transformations, like linear transformations. Um, and um, I came back after a couple of years, uh, two years ago, um, did a big patch to invert the y-axis coordinate system. And since then, I kind of sticked, um, contributed um, quite a bit to the 1.0 release. I was very happy that we finally uh, released that uh, major milestone. Um, yeah, my expertise is um, C++, more than C++, um, Python. And um, I didn't know much about GTK two years ago, but since since then, I learned a lot. And meanwhile, I'm also pretty confident in doing GTK-related uh, stuff in, in Inkscape. All right. Who wants to Welcome, next? Thomas. Um, is anybody new to Inkscape development or has never compiled in Inkscape before? It depends what you mean by new. I've been compiling Inkscape on and off since the year 2000, but I'm not really a member of the team. Welcome, uh, Uncle Pete, Peter. Um, so you've been compiling Inkscape? Are you a, a, a part of the distribution, like you, you get it out there, or you just a curiosity? I agree with the phrase and term curiosity. I, I feel that... If I'm going to make use of open source software, I sort of owe it to the team to compile it myself. But I'm very, very shy when it comes to contributing back. Although I think I have had some one or two patches into the into the project years ago. Oh, excellent! Yeah, and, and big and small contributions. That's 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 the thing. I mean, there's this thing called the long tail of contributions, where programmers uh, there'll be a handful of us who will con contribute large amounts of code. But then there'll be a ton of individuals who contribute small amounts. So everybody is well, well, welcome. Hey, Tav, well, welcome. OK, so if, if, um, if there's no other introductions and everybody has their tea, which I think is important. Um, so if you if you are new and you are compiling Inkscape, let us know. I'm very much interested to to help new pe pe people get on board and and start uh, hacking away at the source source code. Uh, but I think we can have a look at some of the merge requests now. One of the things that I wanted to do for the activities today is not only look at the um, merge requests that are, are um, outstanding, i.e., they they've not been merged in yet. But I thought it would be fun to also look at uh, previous merge requests so we can see, first of all, we can congratulate ourselves on you know some of the amazing work that we've managed to get done, uh, but also have a look at the requests themselves and see like how we've dealt with um, reviewing code. Um, if anybody has any good suggestions for um, sort of like the, the Merge requests that they've been involved with that they felt have been uh, particularly successful in terms of 
uh, reviewing either their code or their reviews of others' code. Um, I'm going to start off with one from, I think it was last week, and I'm going to share my screen. We'll see if my computer crashes. This one. Okay. So this is a this is a list of all of the merged successfully uh, merge requests. You, you can see there's 1,738 successful merged, uh, which is quite impressive when you, when you need to think about it. I know that this includes a lot of merging and cherry picking into into 1.0, but it's still a, like a lot considering we haven't been on Git, GitLab for the entire age of the project. Um, let's see. Been so many that the the one the so the one I'm trying to find is the is the the change uh, I think it was bug two seven seven it was fix you know what I could do I could actually just search for it or not maybe I got the bug the bug wrong what was it about um. Was basically just a. I think it was a crash fix. Um, this one's pretty good, just because it's it's so sim 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 simple. So this um, this is a fix that um, has come in because we managed to to track down a specific issue with the with the dropper tool. And uh, Andreas, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Schalk, Schalk. Uh, found that this this single line change fixed the the issue, which I confirmed with some so some of the original reporters. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing from Twitter is people reporting crashes on win Windows that never seem to happen on Linux, even though you know you'd think that the same code would produce the same kind of crashes. So I wonder if there's a memory there's a difference between memory management. Probably, but I think that that was a good review because Mark, uh, you know, confirmed the the fix was was good and checked, you know, re relatively small improvement, um, and there was no no ne it wasn't necessary to, to to go back and change the code. Uh, well, I, I still don't understand why it would have caused a crash because for me it was like a memory leak. But yeah, that's right. I mean, I mean it's definitely a memory leak, but it it's so strange that there's so many reports of people who have used the dropper tool a lot uh, reporting oh things get crashed again for me I'm, I'm going to bed now because I'm so tired of trying to trying to do whatever it is that they're trying to do um, and that was weird to me it's like you know first of all if, if, if the thing crash crashes they're being very forgiving uh, yeah so this oh it's 227 not 277. So this is a this is a piece of code that I, I wanted to get merged in because I wanted to fix this um, this bug 277 to a uh, 227, uh, and I think I should I should open up the actual bug request if I can find a link to it. N nope, I guess not. Do they, do they, do they, do they I, I would do the hash? I would look for it in the commit message. Yeah. Which I didn't write in. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how it links. Uh, okay, so so the, imagine that this fixes some something undefined. Um, I'm going to load up the the original the original commit and then and then Mark's uh, review. Mark, did did you do this review with me on chat or, or did you do it here? No, on the chat because you mentioned it uh, before asking for comments, and then I. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, this so so this is actually a good example of me making a mistake, which is that I should have put even a small change in for review, 
um, because there are developers who work on the Inkscape pro project that are much more advanced than I am. So they were able to um, point out that the <laughs> the fix that I put in was not not the best. So um, my fix that I originally put in is I changed uh, this line that says delete object true true, and what that basically does is it it goes through and deletes the object and then notifies all of the of the sub or connecting ob objects that that thing has been deleted. Um, but if this list of, of things to delete can also contain one of those items to be notified, um, you ended up in this uh, corrupted memory situation where the, the, the object here no, no longer existed. So changing its faults technically did, did fix the problem because it no longer notified all of the sub objects. Um, and this code was only run when you run Inkscape from 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 a command line. So, you know, notifying the de desktop that it that things had been de deleted didn't seem that important. Um, but Mark correctly pointed out that there was a much better way of fixing this by by essentially uh, adding one to the reference count. Is this right, Mark? Um, so that when it when it went to delete the object, even if it signals to all of the sub objects to delete them. Uh, it wouldn't actually delete the memory uh, from from mem memory until until this part. Uh, it's gar garbage collection, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is a good example of um, where re review really did help uh, improve the code code base because we didn't lose a piece of functionality that could have in the future have bitten us in the butt, even though it did fix the the, the issue as it stood. And then I think there were some issues getting that merged in because um, there was also a, a break in the in the CCI builder. Okay, stop sharing. Okay, so, so that was just an example of the, the merge of requests that we've done in the past. Uh, I'm going to invite anybody else uh, from our de developers here to to share their screens and share their merge requests if they if they have a, an example one that they'd like they'd like to share. Do you want simple ones or very complex decisions? I'd actually like for you to make that decision because it's fine if they're complicated and complicated. I don't think it's going to be an issue. But if you can describe it. Uh... Welcome, Andreas. Martin, I posted one in the chat. Hmm. Oh. <clears throat> um, so I, I'd like to suggest this one because it was very satisfying for me to to write the patch <laughs> because I could actually apply. Um, but the standards that I usually strive for. Um, so it was um, very well-defined functionality, very isolated. It was um, rewriting the API of this your I class. Um, it could be tested very complete and efficient. Um, and it didn't change many files. Um, it changed one file a lot, um, but it was very self-contained. Um, and yeah, in particular, the test coverage uh, gave me a lot of confidence um, that this is a good. And um, lots of new comments too. Yeah, um, so tests and documentation. So it, it was, this is basically, if I have to pick my best commit uh, to the project, this is probably the one because the ratio of code to comments and tests um, is on the side of tests and, and, and comments. Um, and uh, Tab reviewed it. He had a bunch of comments um, that we could discuss. And in the end, um, yeah, he basically said it looks good, and I committed. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a good so, one. <laughs> I'd like to see more done in that in that area. 
Yeah, I think I think having merge requests that are both self-contained and also contain tests and documentation improvements are essentially the the golden ideal for modifications. Um, I'm going to line up a, 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 an extensions merge request if there's no other suggestions. Okay. Um, show my screen again. Oh, wait, um, Thomas, you have the presentation, I think. Thanks, Mel. Okay, so these are the these are the merge requests for the uh, the extensions from repository. Uh, at the previous Hackfest, we we split out the extensions and into their own repository so we could manage them on on their own. Um, so you can see the, the most of the merge requests are ha handled by me, um, but we've also got some some other good contributors who are helping with with, with code cha changes. Um, most of the time, we'll get a a single person who who knows the specific code. So in this case, this person knows that this format uh, in HPGL uh, needs to have this changed, right? And so in this case, I had to make a call because their initial change actually broke all of the tests for HPGL because it, the, in the extensions, we're actually checking to make sure that the inputs and outputs are, are correct. And uh, when you when you add or change the formatting for the file form, from formats, it definitely will always break the tests because that's that's what they're there for. Um, so in this case, I had to make a call bit between whether I should go go back to the the developer and ask them to change the test suite and, and update it, and whether the whether the, the test suite is easy enough to to, to manipulate because you have in this case you have to regenerate the the um, the, the, the data files. Um, and whether they're, they're able to do, do that. In some cases, I have, um, what I've done is I've, I've manually merged in by, by taking their branch, fixing the test myself, and then, and then uh, basically pushing the, the, the cha changes together with, with, with the test suite. And that completely depends upon whether I think that the person who is trying to help is sort of like an advanced developer or whether they're just, they're, they're relatively new, right? So if, if they're just a person who does CNC work and knows maybe a little bit of Python, but not, you know, t uh, test suites and various other most more advanced fe features, then I have to make a decision about whether I'm going to push them uh, to, to learn some new skills or whether I'm going to just get this in quickly to kind of give them a win and, and give the code a win. Because uh, I know how to I know how to update the te test suite relatively e easily. Let's bring it back. So we could have a look at um, some existing uh, tests, um, some existing merge requests, if, if if we want. I think we could go for some Inkscape specific merge requests. I'm also interested if you've got a piece of code that you've been w waiting on a merge request for for, for a while, uh, or a review, I should say, uh, for a while, uh, or you feel like your, your merge request is stuck some, somewhere. Um, I realize that a lot of our merge requests are actually not quite requests. They're, they're just work in pro pro progress. So they're, they're sort of like reviewing, live reviewing. Um, which is a great way of making sure that like, you get other developers in, involved in a specific piece of development work uh, without without notifying them that you actually intend for this to be committed. Uh, let's have a look. Do you, do you want to live review uh, the one I did uh, ten seconds ago? Uh... <laughs> yeah, the more more, more unknown classes. Let's yeah. go. Exciting. Okay, so we, we have forty three cha changes. The pipeline is still running, so we don't we don't know whether it compiles. Um, 
no I, I don't know either because uh, I committed uh, a subset of the uh, modified files I have locally. <laughs> okay. So this is this is a change to the to the class uh, in attribute rel util. So it adds node type. So those are all those are all pretty much the same. Yeah. NM classes are basically about type safety for NMs, so yeah. that you cannot use their uh, numeric equivalent even if you wanted to. Yeah, so I believe this was the, this was the advice I was given for one one of my pieces of work as well to use these. Um, so each each time that you have this, you, uh, in in standard C, you would be able to use just a, a, a number here, and it would be equivalent uh, type wise. But in this case, it, you have to use one of these types to to you have to use one of these. Um, what are they called? Uh, Enumerations. <clears throat> well, the change is that it's scoped, so now every enum has a scope, and of course, what Mark said that it's uh, type safe that you don't have implicit conversions. Yeah. And so, if, if there's a part of the code that was using a a, a, a number instead, now, we'd, we'd immediately see a fa failure, right? It's not just that, it's also that if you have several enums uh, declared in your code base and they have the uh, elements with the same names and you have using something, thinking it's something else, then you cannot mix them up because they, they are scoped. And right. that's, I think, the most important part of this. I, I think that we have uh, several places with document node or something like that, and this is the XML instance of that. So you cannot yeah. mix that with anything else now. That's that's great. That's I didn't find any sense. bug actually with this one, but uh, the previous time I did any, an NM class, I found a specific instance of that kind of error. Uh, yeah. So this is an instance where it's, you 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 have using, uh, and then and then the previous code just said text node, and in this instance you might have had two two usings from different parts of the code code base, both with this name, huh. by accident. So something I would have liked to see in this merge request is a description, basically saying that there's no functional change, but enhances type safety. Yeah, yeah. No, I I just made the merge request in ten seconds, but when he asked for something. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, I figured you picked something from from the backlog, but uh, yeah, having a live a live request. So, this, so you've just done done this code this week or, or today? Yeah, yeah, I did it this week. Nice. Yeah, so so a lot of these changes you, you can see are very sim similar. So each of these times where you see this this helpfully um, color co coded instance, we can see exactly the the fact that this pattern has been changed over, over and over and over again. Um, this is and this is a different change, right? So is this? Related? Oh yeah, this is different. It's not. No, it was unrelated, but I think it should compile anyway. Okay. <laughs> so is this is this a case Sorry. where where the golden the the, the golden um, merge request wouldn't wouldn't contain this, right? Because this isn't self-contained. This is a different. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, definitely uh, comment and say this is not related to your to to what you are telling it. Should, it's it's about so you, you should re remove that. <laughs> definitely comes back to the title and the description, which is not there. Right, right. So let's 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 make this an example. So um, so I think that uh, this code should be in its own merge request. Um, and then, I'll, and then you can either do an add com comment now or a start review. I'm going to start the review, which I have to remember. You have to click on this finish review when, when you're finished. And then we can continue and we can see, make sure that everything else is correct. Well, then you, are, you have the line just before where it's, it's equivalent in <laughs> just yeah. before your comment. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's there's two there, but I fi I figure that that would make, that will make sense. 
and here's the actual here's the actual change, right? So this so all of the previous ones we've seen are, are the, them using it, but this is the case where um, this is the the change in the definition. Mm -hmm. There are actually two, but yes, this is the main one. I see. So so there's actually another one called uh, what's it called? Type node. Uh, no, no, not node, not node. about node type. It's uh, a one about uh, units. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, we use this a lot. It makes sense because this is this is a, a lot of XML stuff, right? There we go. There's, there's the end. So I've I've finished um, looking at the code. Uh, now I can either submit the review, or in this case, I could actually da download the code onto my computer and, and compile it myself, and then run it and test a specific bug or a specific feature. Um, it's less important for code clean cleanup because if it compiles. Um, and unless there's something very specific that you can test, um, then we will we'll know from, from the CI builder whether it compiles or not. Uh, so in this case, I can, I can put in my comment and we'll see. <laughs> and then Mark has responded, which is great. And then what will happen is GitLab will tell us whether, the, whether there's been a change to this code uh, when Mark pushes up a change. I'm actually going to assign myself. Do we have many uh, labels for, for merge of this? No, we don't have labels specific to match requests. This is a kind of refactoring, isn't it? And I don't think there's anything that we, you would change necessarily for the test suites um, in this case, because it's, it, the idea is that this wouldn't actually change the fun functionality at all. So what does standard unique point pointer do? Uh, basically, when it gets out of the scope, it deletes the content. OK. So if it's in like an if block or if it's in a func function? Any, any way of disappearing. Like if you forget, if you don't have a correct destructor and uh, you delete the object and uh, it was uh, it uh, possessed see this object and it's your unique bit here it got it also should i think get out of the scope and be deleted properly okay so now we can see that there's a there's a uh, mark has changed this line and we can have a look to see what's changed i presume it's it's just reverted back yeah and there was a there was a, a second place that i didn't note but it was it was related and now was I think there a related delete for that, or was it? There was a, a, a yeah, it was a revert because they, they were right next to each other in in the in the cha changes list. Okay, so now you can't actually uh, merge it because it's uh, it's got un unresolved threads. So we can go to the go to the first unresolved thread, which is this one, and just say resolve. Because we're happy. And then we can say uh, merge when pi pipeline succeeds. So assuming that the code compiles. This one you could squash. Uh, I, I didn't, uh, you don't need because I, um, I forced the push. I just uh, oh, amended. Yeah. I amended, so I forced the push. I did not add one commit to undo this thing. 
Yeah, so fast um, publishing is what you can do when you have when you own the own, your own branch, right? Um, mm -hmm. And not when you're on master. Uh, so this is a question from Ventile. Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, first, okay. about the capabilities of the pipelines. Uh, the pipelines are uh, virtual machines uh, owned by GitLab on Google Cloud Platform with, I think, two CPUs, which are not very particularly fast. Uh, but they, we uh, cache a lot of things and we use Ccache, so it's faster that way. But yeah, so we don't have a lot of control on that. About, on that. Yeah, I suspect the, that. Oh, so sorry, go on, Matt. Uh, if you want to go on, on this question, and then we can go to the next question. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you know, it's, it, it is also possible that in the future there will be some uh, service provider that will offer open source pro projects like Inkscape the, the ability to have um, things like CI builds on some super massive cluster thingamajig. Um, so if you, if you do know of services like that, maybe that's something interesting to bring. I don't think that's worth the hassle. It works right, like quickly enough to, uh, for now, I think. And so the, the second question is, do, do you think squashed merges are better or not? So squashed merges are where you take all of the uh, ch changes that have happened uh, and the merge request and you, you compile them all down to a single uh, commit. Which then gets added onto the onto the target branch. Um, these can be these can be really nice in terms of tidying things up. Um, but the thing that you lose is the um, the progress. So if there's a lesson to be learned in in terms of like the changes that have been made, maybe you 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 tried something and it didn't work. Uh, that can be val valuable too. So. Sometimes when there's been a lot of change changes because the, the developer wasn't sure about their own skills or the, the pattern they should use, and then we just squash the commits because the final result is, is most most invaluable. Um, it depends. I think if I had a merge request that had like 20, 20 commits um, and, and we and it was basically a case of the end the end result was just you know adding three three lines, I would definitely squash them. Uh, is it true that our um, Windows builds are done by a different cert service? Yeah, Windows builds are done by uh... Appveyor. Appveyor, yeah. And. Um... This is a question that I had. So, so our CCI builds produce packages. Uh, AppVare produces the, the, the Windows packages, but our, uh, the GitLab ones produce the Mac package and the Linux flat pack, I think. Um, are those files, when they're ready, are those hosted on alpha.inkscape.org, or are they just linked from alpha.inkscape.org? Um. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Alpha grabs them or if we send them somehow with SCP. Yeah. At least the Mac builds, I think, are manually uploaded to Alpha because uh, Renee signs them and notarizes them. Ah uh, yes. Uh, we we had a we had a request from our in, in Indonesian friends to uh, improve the speed of da downloads for the for the Mac builds because they are downloading the the um, master builds, and they're very slow because it's just a sing single machine. So, uh, something we're going to have to think, think about whether we should push them to the CDN or not. Okay, so um, I have a I have an interesting poll that I'd like to do. Let's see if I can start a poll.
Oh, it's not scrolling. So the question is, is what is your primary development platform, i.e. what is the platform that you use to develop Inkscape on? And if you're not if you're not a developer or you don't consider yourself a developer, um, you, it's also okay if you if you've compiled Inkscape, you feel free to put in um, whatever plat platform that 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 is. Excellent. It looks like we've only got two people who haven't answered yet, Tom and, and Pathpant. Um, I'll give you a, a couple more seconds. Thanks, Tom. OK, publishing. So this is this is very interesting. Uh, Fifty-four percent Linux, uh, thirty-eight percent Windows, eight percent Mac, which is just one 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 person, and no nobody's developing for Chrome OS or Android or on an iPad or a Jacquard Loom. Um, this this has always been a really interesting. Um, Sort of home, home, tr homespun truth in the Inkscape development team, which is that uh, the pr primarily most of our developers are on Linux, but most of our users are on win Windows, uh, which has made it hard that if Windows users come to us and say, "Hey, I have a problem," um, it crashes or there's some other specific issue, uh, our ability to fix those is issues is is limited, um, but nowhere near as limited as our ability to fix Mac issues. Um, it's only fortunate, I think, that that Mac. Once you've gotten past some of the issues, the, the rest of them look very much like Linux issues. Mark, once you've once you've um, published a poll, is there a way to to take it off the slide? Yeah, you can clear the slide uh, with one to the one of the button on the right, on the right. There you go. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. That was fun. Late, later on in the Hackfest, I'm going to do some more polls related to uh, the when we think the 1.1 release and the 1.0.1 bug fix release should should happen. Uh, if you go to the shared notes, you'll be able to see the options that I'll be putting in those polls, uh, and you can add your own if you think there's there's some good options there. Okay, so Mark says in the chat that there are several ways to break the CI build, uh, merging before the merge request from pipeline ends. The, the AppVeyor one. The, oh, the AppVeyor one. Yeah. Okay. So this is specific to AppVeyor, uh, and and then if the, there's a, a dependency break, uh, cancelling the job or a genuine pipeline fa failure. Oh, interesting. So this in this pipeline link that we have, the, there's there's an external uh, continuous integration. Is that is that the, the link that goes out to Affair? Yeah, sometimes GitLab and AppVeyor have problems talking to one another, and some things that failed just does not answer to GitLab, and 
basically stays in the, in limbo forever. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to look for more um, merge requests to have a look at. If anybody has any um, suggestions. Uh, yeah, I have a suggestion of med request. Uh, we can look at um, 644, 644. Okay. In, in, uh, in Inkscape itself, right? Yeah. Okay, this is um, Ho. Antonilin and Anton Linez. Um, mispronouncing things is definitely my thing. So this is a uh, the favorites feature request. Is that is that, is that right, Mark? I'm going to share share my screen. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. So this is a th this is a merge request by a person who is new. So that you, you can see here that this marker that says first contribution. This, this can some, sometimes be very important if you're uh, having a look at some, someone else's change because it in, indicates that they've maybe not uh, gone through this process before, so they might need some some more hand, hand holding and definitely a lot, a lot more politeness and, pa and patience and just like, because they're, they're, they're bound to get things wrong. Uh, so it says, hi, this merge request corresponds to, to the feature request with the same name, C, uh, what is that, issue, yeah, in, inbox issue. Uh, 383. It contains all code, icons, and configuration changes necessary to, to make the favorites work in the latest Inkscape code base. Let's have a look at this. Some, sometimes your design workflow requires repeatedly executing Inkscape com commands that are not easily accessible through me menu toolbars. It would be helpful to have a customizable area in the Inkscape workspace where you can add her most demanded commands for her specific workflow, which may also change from project to project. So what should have happened? Let me suggest that the following solution code for this feature is available in the merge request uh, in a se separate branch. Open up the favorites dialog. Uh, set it, uh, selecting the favorite actions commands and using them as wished and then arranging them. Ah, uh, we're, we're loading. And yeah, there's some some more arranging. So this this particular merge request includes not just a feature; it's a graphical fe feature. So if you if you wanted to to um, to review this, being able to download the code and compile it on on your machine would be pretty important. And we can work work uh, work on that. And show you what that looks like. I I don't think I should kick off the actual um compiling on my computer just because i'm hosting this room and i don't want to screw anything up okay so let's see so what, what do you think about my merge proposal is it interesting this is them saying that they are in, in, interested to, to have more developer feed feedback and then here's nathan lee uh, so nathan lee's been helping out in our bug in our bug team or team testing Hmm. He's also fixed a lot of bugs. Oh, excellent. yeah, that's true. I mean, people step step around all, all over the place. Okay, so this is this is us basically saying create a merge request, uh, and then there's some some bug stuff. So let's actually have a look at the code. Um, do we have any existing comments? Yes, we do. So this is this is me. I've I've gone in and I've looked at the code and, I, and I've made a single comment instead of commenting on specific items in, in in the code. Sometimes there's just a lot of change changes that happen, and you can see here each of these modifications that that they've done since. And then here's Mark's review. Uh, so this is this is a call to rebase. This means um, adding in all of the ch changes that have happened to Master since then. So this is this is a uh, uh, after they've 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 cleaned it up. Uh, 
Um, and this is specific to, uh, so this, this actually has a specific issue to extensions, which is that um, the extensions repository itself is like this separated thing, and it does not include icons, which means that if you wanted a feature like this that included icons, the way you should do it is you should try and modify the way the extensions repository works so that it has icons in it and the INX file specifies an icon, etc. But that, that is such an involved fe feature that that should probably be a separate thing that you add on later. In a sort of strange way, this is a, a bit like feature creep where you, you start off with a really good idea and then you sort of go, oh, but if I did this idea, I could also do this other extra thing. And that extra thing ends up being either more complicated than you intended or it brings in and connects to other parts of the project that makes it more difficult to, to merge in. Um, and, and I think that's one of the main reasons why <coughs> this was never merged. And I think it will, I, I personally think it will never be merged uh, for several reasons. Yeah, so I think I think uh, this is one of Adam's priorities. Uh, the, he's our UX team lead, so that this is one of his priorities. He says that this should be merged um, in, in what, whatever way. And I think you're right in that. I, I I don't know whether the original developer is going to come back or not, but um, if they don't, I, he, he, I he came back that. regularly for the past year because he submitted that I think more than a year ago. Yeah. And he came back just uh, last month. Okay, so the, so that's so, that, I mean that's an indication that it's still so relatively active. If, but um, I, I, one of the problem I think is that it's uh, uh, duplicate work with uh, our uh, um, uh, summer of code project. Oh, you you mean the you mean the, the one where you type it in, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's based. So we so we had this discussion last week about this specifically uh, about um, whether this. The design of this conflicts with the design of the Google Summer of Code project. And I believe it's the impression of the UX team that it, it is not a user experience conflict. OK. Um, that was my first impression, too, that like this may be redundant now because of that. But I'm willing to trust the UX team and say that if they make a call and say that, no, actually, they think that this is a, this is a functionality that can stand on its own. Um, as long as it have... does not duplicate codes and yes, yeah, that's that's yeah. yeah. And another thing is that I think it will be very hard to correctly maintain in the long term, especially since it adds a lot of icons. Adding a lot of icons in only one set is something hard to do. Now, all the extra icons are um, are for the extensions, right? Not just the extensions; it's for Let's have a look at the, the changes here. It's for uh, everything, just extensions, filters, any any verbs, uh, basically everything. So in this case, um, there are 3,859 additions in into 31 files. That, this is like, an awfully big uh, change. And remember, verbs are going to go away. But, yeah, no, no, most of the changes are basically new SVG icons for, uh, for instance, filter some filters, uh, some some actions, basically just some actions, a few actions. So, okay. so we could we could in in, in theory we could s uh, split. But I, I like the idea, the but it asks to create basically lots of icons before it becomes very useful. Yeah, I'm wondering. Are icons really needed for uh, to use it? Sort of, yeah. Because the the idea is that you you're creating a toolbar uh, of of customized things, which means that the the icon is is the thing that you're going to be looking at. The question is is how useful is this functionality uh, without, for instance, filters or extensions, right? So if you just got rid of all of the things that you need new icons for, um, is this still useful? Um, and the thing is, is that if we already have an icon for, for it, it's probably because it's already in a tool, toolbar. I, I, I guess that you could do it without icons if you had like a menu with a name, but then you're getting into the Summer of Code project. 
Yeah, but if it's see if it's the, the idea of it being a palette is is what makes it um, a distinct thing from from typing in um, from the command palette. What, what, actually, what's that called? Uh, command line. Is it more like a command line, right? Maybe. So, yeah. I think there What's should it? be a way to access the f f favorite things in the common palette project, like mark them as a star or whatever, and having them uh, f show up first in the in the list or something, something like that. Yeah, I mean, one one option is is that we could just say you know have have a collection of twenty relatively generic icons and then allow the user to select not just the command but also to pair it with an icon their own icon right so they can decide oh yeah i want this this action this extension and this also allows the user to have for instance an external icon an external um, action right so say if you have an extension that does i don't know sewing or something that's added on top afterwards uh, that's not going to have an icon and so in, in, in the way this is designed currently, uh, that functionality would either have a generic I icon, a missing icon, or wouldn't be available for, the, for this palette. Or a custom uh, icon that they provide. Sorry, Tab, you're a little bit muffled there. Or a custom icon that they provide. Yes, yes, exactly. So like a, a custom icon or, or one of, like maybe a, a selection of a few ones that they could pick from. Um, maybe that would be a way to unblock this. Maybe. Uh, um, I'm just thinking I want this to progress in some way. I just, I feel, yeah, I feel bad be. about this uh, being in limbo for one year. And it's just that okay. I think it will be lots of work to maintain or make progress in a way that does not conflict with our smart project. OK. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a task uh to i think i think this this particular measure request should be should be given back to the ux team so that they can have a think about it and the requirement from the de developer team is that it not require a, a, a new icon for every single extension and every single filter absolutely yeah okay so throw so merge request back the requirement um, and so what I'm going to do is, uh, rather than comment on the merge request, where um, uh, the UX team won't probably see that unless the unless the participants have have been involved pre pre previously. Uh, I'm going to create a UX issue in, in, in the Inkscape UX team's issue tracker. And that way, they'll, they'll be able to com comment on that and decide on you know what, what they want to do. So hopefully, we can unblock this through, through some design. Because I think we've made our requirements pretty clear. OK, so it's actually uh, it's a great time to, to have a, our break. Um, in seven minutes time, we're going to come back and, and hear Thomas's uh, presentation. So everybody go get a drink. In seven minutes, that's not enough time to make tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, if, if you need extra time, let me, let me know now and we'll come back at five past. No, I will manage. <sighs> Manage with us. You see, you've got to have one of these teapots that has one of these nice little um, <laughs> buttons. <laughs>